Hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, aka Big Sarge, large and in charge of my one and only self. Turn this music down real quick. Taking myself up off the shelf to discover and find my greatest internal wealth. Hopefully, you're doing the same for yourself, brother Tim. What's going on with you on this fine Sunday afternoon? How you doing? Thank you for joining us. Appreciate you coming through. Well, I know Whiskey Charlie won't be able to make it tonight, and neither will Chris. And uh, I believe I'm waiting on Killer Wolf to come through and do what he do. But if not, it looks like it's just going to be me and you. I think I got a couple of calls that I missed. So we're going to see if I can return this, and then uh, we're going to get right to it. Talk a little bit about some stress, some strategies, and some success good been a rough last few months hey i hear you man hopefully everything is coming out better for you on the other side i uh definitely empathize with that i've had a rough few months going on in my life too so that's something that we could talk about tonight what tips and tricks and strategies we use in order to get through when you're dealing with the rough times that we sometimes do but y'all know what it is it's speak grunt grunt speak well, we come through and we speak to you and we hope you do like Tim is doing. You get down in the chat and you speak back with us too. And we figure out some things, uh, figure out how to help you and help me too. That's what we going to do. Everybody welcome, but everybody cannot be a member. 11B, 11 Charlie, or 11 Alpha, as Chris would say, for the officer way. And then the 0311 from the Marine Corps crew. You know what it do. Salute to my brothers and sisters. My brothers and sister in arms, uh, we appreciate and we respect you too. But this one right here, this is specific to what grunts have been through and what they do. But everybody welcome. You know that true. All right. Hold the line one second. Let me see if I can get Killo here. Because I've seen I missed a call from him. And then he's probably like, you don't see my, my what's the name? So I don't know if I'm going to be able to help him get in, but we're going to see what we can do. I think I'm calling too many people at one time. What's happening with you, man? <laughs> you can't click on the link? Oh, on your uh, on your safari. Yeah, so I just wrote down the link about the Okay, that's what's up. Well, I'm I'm here when you get there. It's all good. Well, yeah, let me call you right back. Yeah. Peace. Uh, that's what he got to do. He got to type in link in order to get through. Man, I tell you, technology. That's something that we have to learn to do. You need, uh, no offense, you need super technology grunt, nerd grunt, or the guy that always come through and tell you what the computers do. I know I done had a couple of those guys that helped me out too. Back in the day for me when I went to Iraq for the first time in 06, it was a young kid named Weldon who helped me uh, select my first laptop at the time and gave me some tips and uh, ideas some things that really enlightened my mind, expanded my mind because I had no idea what I was looking into. Now here it is in 2022, our phones can do everything that a laptop would do. Hey, I use my phone to print from my computer screen, to, to print from my printer too, especially when my computer is acting up. So we're going to give uh, Shooter just a few minutes to see what he do as he type in. But while we're waiting in, Let's talk a little bit about this one minute win, one minute war, something that you might be battling with, something that you might be dealing with or something that you might have went through over maybe the last week or two and how it's affected you. And while I'm waiting to see what you type in the chat, I'll give a little bit to you. War, my vehicle. So back in November, when my father was still alive, I got a minivan because it made it easier to transport him on his multiple doctor rides. And I tell you, man, over the last three weeks a month, I feel like this thing has been giving me one issue after the next. And I know you shouldn't be speaking things out there into existence, and I'm not. I'm just speaking about the things that's really been happening. I want to say it's maybe a week or two ago, or 
Yeah, a little bit, about three weeks or so ago, I had to put an alternator in there. And let me be clear, I'm no mechanic. I'm a speaker by by, by talent, by, by uh, skill that I'm being building. But mechanic and is not something that I enjoy to do. But I was able to save myself a few hundred bucks by getting my patients on and uh, getting the alternator in. And I had a neighbor help me out too. I made it through that and that wasn't an issue. Then I had some play in my wheel. I won't even say play, feel like a little bit of vibration when you hit the brakes. So I'm like, huh, maybe my brakes are going bad. And I thought maybe it could be a tire too. But what did I do? I talked to my buddy, DJ Knox. He'd be on here sometimes too. He in the background part of the crew. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, we are taking a ride one day. And he said, the way that thing is shaking, it could be your brakes. And your rotor seems like they warped. So what did I do? I grabbed my son. I went to AutoZone. I grabbed the parts too. And uh, grabbed the parts too and changed my brakes the other day. Maybe one day last weekend or something like that. Changed the brakes and the rotors, me and my son. That's what we went out there and was able to do. And that was cool. Went through. Then still had the tire vibration and the shaking. So what did I do? I went to the tire store and I had to make sure they was balanced. And they had to be balanced. So I got that done too. Me and me and my boo, me and my wife was out the other day and she was uh doing some door dashing, making some extra cash. And I was uh driving her around the chauffeur thing. And one point in time, I went to open the door and I broke the handle. And I don't know how I did that, but I used to be able to open it from the inside. Man, it's a long war. I used to be able to open it from the inside. Well, that part died yesterday too. And I'm like, man, what is going on with this vehicle? This thing could not this did not be what it was supposed to do, right? But hey, that's the war, that's the battle. What's the win and all that? I was able to overcome and make it through. I was able to put the alternator on too. I was able to change the brakes too. I was able to get the tires balanced too. And although the thing is still going through, I was able to win because I did those things that I thought I could not do. And also what did that do? That confirmed something for me too. Now that my father is no longer here with us, I no longer need a minivan, so I'm going to let them come get it, man. They can take it right back to where we got it from. I don't care what they do, and I'm going to find something else that's going to be productive for me and the family crew. So the win in the end is just keep pushing your way through. Keep fighting the way through. Don't let the stress get to you. Don't let it overwhelm you because there's going to be something that everybody runs into in life. At a certain time in their life, whether it be in the daytime or the night, so you can make it through. Tim, let me see what you got down here for me today. Tim said, taking the exam soon, so war is being concerned. I will pass it. Win is getting a bunch of workshops to help study. That's pretty cool. Uh, remind me again of what exam you taking because that's a <laughs> that's, that could be another one minute win, one minute war for me too because I got an exam that's coming up. Um, I think it's May the 16th, but I might need to change it to May the 22. Uh, we'll be taking the property and casualty for uh, State Farm because I'm going to get into this insurance thing too and look at seeing what really life insurance do. So I think that will be interesting for me. But studying that dry, boring information, yeah, that's a drag on me. But I got a lockdown and I have to focus on what I need to do in order to make sure that I get through it. So, yeah, that could be a war, too, when you prepare for tests and all those things that we have to do. They can sometimes get the best of you. Uh, let me see here. Yep, there go, there go Shooter. Hold on one second, man. Shooter, what's happening? All right, man, it's just me. I'm here solo. Whiskey Charlie ain't here, neither is Chris, so it's all good, man. I will, uh... I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I would have to put you on the line or something with my wife and see if she could talk you through, because I don't have an iPhone, and I know she do, so I don't even know what I'm looking at to be able to tell you. I'll uh, I'll resend you the link and I'll drop it in the message on Facebook again and see if you'll be able to get in that way or I'll text it to you. If I can text it to you, I don't think it'll let me text it to you, but I'll drop it on Facebook real quick. All right. Peace.
That was shooter calling me. Uh, same here. Just have a just have same here. Just have to move forward. Absolutely, indeed. That's all we can do is uh, move forward and keep making our way through. Just like being on this show, that's what you have to do. You have to find a way to keep fighting your way through. But ain't that what happened in the infantry too? We adjust fire and we make it do what it do. We make sure that we uh, secure the package and we take care of our entire crew. Hey, sometimes in life, things don't happen to you. It's not about what happens to you. It's about how you handle those things. And that's why I wanted to talk about today. Stressing. Excuse me. What are you stressing about? What are you stressing about? And then what strategies do you use to get past that stress so you can find your success? What strategies do you use to get past that stress so you can find your success? And what does that success look like for you? And what do you believe you'll be able to do when you free yourself from that stress? You know? Same here, just have to move forward. Learning how to take that tactical pause because I could talk for the whole hour, y'all. And then I won't take a chance to read the chats or the comments, especially when you ain't going back and forth with nobody. But uh, I guess, whew, excuse me, that's what happens when you're getting up at 2.30 and 4.30 in the morning some days. You don't get a nap. You just keep going that way. And it's 8 o'clock, 9, 10 o'clock. My body be ready to shut it down anyway. But what is stress? Stress is the feeling of being overwhelmed or unable to cope with mental or emotional pressure. Being overwhelmed or unable to cope with mental or emotional pressure. Mm -mm. I try not to stress, it doesn't solve much. That is very true. Stress will kill you. Stress is one of the leading causes of dis-ease in the body. Stress is one of the leading causes of dis-ease in the body. And stress probably kills more people in our country than bullets do. But the bullets is all they ever talk about to you. That's probably why we have 22. 22 soldiers committing suicide on a daily basis. Stress. What strategies do we need to put in place to erase that amount of faces, that amount of family members that somebody will never get to see anymore because we didn't know how to deal with the stress. We didn't know how to deal with the mess. Right? There was something that happened when we were deployed overseas. Maybe it was something that happened in our personal life before we even got to the army. Maybe it was something that happened after we came home. Something that we didn't know how to deal with, the job you went back to or the job you didn't have anymore that just left you, just threw you out there. There's a multitude of things that could bring you stress. Look, you just heard me talk about the mess that I was going through with my vehicle. That could be stressful too, especially when you're riding around and another thing that thing happened to do. Check engine light came on, had to go to auto zone. And like, man, I look like one of your sensors might be bad. And it might just be in your transmission. So they're going to have to drop that. I'm like, Ah, come on, man. I ain't even had this thing six months. That could drive you crazy and that could cause some stress too. Or you could just be grateful that you got a car to jump into, that you have the mindset that can help you change you by speaking to friends and people and surrounding yourself with positive energy to help you get through. Because stress on its own will definitely kill you. Hey, that go kill a wolf. He look like he found his way. Killer Wolf Look. found his way to the show today. Wearing that, that Killer Wolf Fitness t-shirt. I see you. Man, I've been right down, sitting there with that. I think I got it down now, man. Hey, that's all right. That's all uh it's all part of the process, man. It's yeah, something yeah. that we have to do to find our way through. What's, What's going good? on with the killer? See, it, man. Ain't slow motion, baby. Slow motion finished that book. Um got that book Thursday. I'll finish that motherfucker today. Yeah, I seen that. I seen you posted that. I said, man, Killer said he's gonna do four chapters a day, but the chapters are small too, and it's a it's a good read and it's an easy read too. Definitely, yeah, uh, it definitely is. <laughs> yeah, did it's you did you book, did you, man. you say that again? It's a good ass book though, man. I learned a lot of shit from it for us. 
you know, the ups and downs with these crazy women, um, the importance of, you know, finding your purpose, um, the importance of just, you know, being all around better man, you know, actually giving your woman all your love and all that shit, you know, but yeah, it's, it's a real good book, man. Talking about really? this one right here, the way of the superior man, the David right. Dita man. So I got right, some little, little pages folded while I left off in and what hey, I there go you go. back to. You know, um, you, you were, about cold women, um neutral, um, and hot. But yeah, man, it's it's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. I think I got me a hot one now. And I, my masculinity, well, you know, well, however you say that shit. I'm attracted to a hot woman. I need me a hot woman. I was in a neutral zone. So, <laughs> you know, we kind of just started, you know, kind of just going with the flow of things and, you know, kind of was like a, not like a partnership, but it just became just a everyday regular thing. You need that hot girl, like, like bring it out. You know what I'm saying? Man, you keep bring looking out. over there. I'm, my, my, I'm wondering if she right there. You keep looking at her. <laughs> what? Nah, nah, man, nah. Hey, you keep on looking over there. I'm like, man, is he looking at her or what? <laughs> nah, I ain't nothing like that, but I ain't nothing like that. Some catch my eye back that way, but yeah. Oh yeah, I'm the I'm the same way, man. Every time I hear a little something going on, it catch my eye. I look the other way. Um, then I'm out in the garage outside, so I'll be having you know people. Like oh yeah, nothing creeping up on me. Man. Always got to be checking your six, man. That's just something that we do. Something that right, we do. Right. Right. Today I uh typed in the chat what we wanted to talk about and uh catch you up. Uh, I be drinking those right there too. Substitute that thing for when I was drinking sodas. Mm. Get that get Pretty that good. little fizz, but I don't have all the sugar in it. Right, right. No sugar in that mother. Yeah, right now I'm I'm on this good gallon. Oh. Did I drunk? I'd already drunk one of them mother. <laughs> Well, you know, you've been drinking a gallon a day for the last 20 years, probably. Oh, hell no. I wish. Probably a gallon, <laughs> probably a gallon of gin or some shit every day. <laughs> hell no. Nah. This, this, this kind of just started a little while ago. <laughs> yeah. That's what's yeah. up. But uh, I'm going to jump back into these comments real quick from Tim and myself was going back and forth. But bringing you up to speed man i'm talking about stress and i titled this thing stress strategies and success you know things that bring you stress in life what stress actually is and what strategies and tips are you using to get through those stressful moments and the success that it brings when you do get through those stressful moments and um how you can use certain tips to help other people get through those stressful moments as well and me and tim was kind of going back and forth you were talking about a little bit of one minute win, one minute war. He was talking about an exam. I got an exam coming up and we were both kind of talking about that. And he was saying, you know, I try not to stress. It doesn't solve much. And I'm like, absolutely. Because stress is the number one killer in the United States. You know, it leads to disease and that disease leads to a multitude of other things. Right. And uh, Tim was saying all decisions should be made cognitively from the brain and any decisions from the heart is non-congruent Ooh, that's good right so don't react out of your feelings is what he's saying right. think through the process control. now oh that's my uh my 420 alarm even though it's 820. Uh, yeah since four since 420 i start i had to give up a ton of things and i had to add some things to it so Right. On the fours at 4.20 a.m. when I wake up in the morning, and I get my little workout in, and at 8.20 it goes off again. So that's like my that's my 20-minute workout meditation time. And then at 12.20 when it come back, because that's a factor of four, I do it again. And at 4.20 I do it again. And at 8.20 is when it ends. So Dang. I'll be doing it again. You know, they say if you get rid of something, you have to replace it with something else. It's like when right, you start right. to get rid of stress, those tips and those strategies and those tricks, you have to replace it with something else or it just comes right back. Or as they say in the Bible, when you start to clean out your house, clean out your mind, clean out your spirit, and you get rid of those old demons and those old devils, well, what happens is he come back with six or seven homeboys that's even stronger. 
Yeah. And if you got an empty house and you ain't putting nothing else in there, it's going to be even worse for you. So when you remove one thing, you need to add something new to your repertoire to uh, make it through. So that's where we was at, just to bring it up to you, just talking a little bit about stress. So, you know me, I have to do my research and look up a few things. And I was um, saying, you know, what is stress? And stress is the feeling of being overwhelmed or unable to cope with mental or emotional pressure. And I thought that was pretty dope, especially when we talk about, you know, being on this platform with speak grunt, grunt speak, as I like to always say. And then you think about the 22 soldiers that we lose every day. And you just have to know that it's got to be some stress in there that flow. It's got to be some things that they're dealing with that they don't know how to cope with or they wasn't even taught or figured out, you know, new strategies to work your way through this, you know? Right. Yeah, you're right, man. Um, you know, like I said, um, with dealing with stress, I say you have to, if, if you could remove yourself from the stress that's in your life, um, I would say do that first. And for us, the stress, like a stressful job or something like that, man, you got to actually, you got to actually, what I, what I read up on in this book, too, um, you got to have, like, breathing techniques. You know what I'm saying? Say, breathe through your nose and, you know, come through your gut and let it blow out or whatever. But, man, you got to have something that focus your mind in a good way. I don't care if it's exercising or, um, you know what I'm saying, cooking. Um, I'm I'm back fishing now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've I seen that. That's a relaxing that. thing right there. Yeah, I haven't did that since I was a young boy, so I'm I'm kind of getting back to my, you know, my zen for as shit that I like to do. You know what I'm saying? Fishing, um, lifting weights. You know what I'm saying? Now I love to read now because my mind just kind of just flew into the book, kind of like I was watching TV. Like I could see what the hell he was saying and you know, put that shit into my life and shit that I was doing wrong and stuff like that. But you got to find your zen, man. I don't care if it's meditation or kickboxing. Um, you know, like, you got to find some way to get that stress out. But if you could um put that stress in the garbage can, like, say, a fucked up relationship, um, you know what I'm saying, fucked up friends you hang around or Whatever the case may be, man, you know, that's a that's a choice. You choose to be in that situation, you know what I'm saying? But if you if, if that's the main part of your situation, I say get the hell away from it, you know. And that's like, you know, that'd be the main main thing. Sometimes people, relationships, friendships, um, you know, relationships with your own family members, all that shit, man. But, yeah, just you're responsible for your own happiness, you know. This your life, you know, once it's gone, it's gone. I, I think, I don't think we come back, but who knows, you know. But yeah, yeah well, once, once it's over with, it's over with. So, you know, you're responsible for your own happiness. You know, be selfish. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Just be selfish. But if you're not happy, you can't make nobody else happy. So, man, you got to gotta find that, find your happiness and go along with it, man. Nothing but facts there, man. You know, Will Killer is part of one of my, uh, one of my definitely my accountability prayer partners, prayer brothers group. There's like six or seven of us, and we get in the chat. And that's like I said with Tim earlier, I had some stuff over the last few months that I felt like was just beating me down. And I knew I had to build a team around me because I couldn't do it on my own. You give to everybody else as I've been attempting to do. And then you lose you. You don't give to yourself. And you forget to be selfish a little bit, or you forget to be set boundaries you know right. as uh some people would say you know my wife sometimes i don't like that word you say selfish no you have to learn how to be selfish sometimes and take back some of your time because you you are very important and if you ain't good nobody else around you will be good so that's right. a very important thing i was reading through the book today myself and i'm like man i remember reading this because i read it like twice already i remember reading all these things and it was feeding me I'm like, I feel like I'm on somewhere else. I need to reset boundaries. So you know me, I had to go in my closet, look on my shelf, <laughs> dig into my, my Rolodex of books, and I found my other book, Boundaries. So I'm like, I'm finna start <laughs> reading this because hey. these are things that I used to help me when I was going through stressful things too. And it 
it's right. amazing what reading can do for you. It's amazing how it opens you up and it gives you a different outlook on life. I was reading something on Google and um, when I looked up stress and I just had a question, like what percentage of Americans, what percentage of Americans do you believe deal with stress? Tim, if you got something, drop it down in the chat. And if uh, Wolf, before you, before you answer that for me, because that's a question for you too. Let me read this comment from Tim. He was kind of piggybacking on what you said when you were reading a book about breathing techniques and meditating. He was saying that breathing is very important and count your and count your breaths. Counting your breaths allows your mind to focus on something other than what is stressing you. Yeah, if it doesn't benefit you, don't do it. Right. Ooh, Tim, that's a good one right there. Tim say it's seventy five percent. He believe it's seventy five percent of people in the world in America deals with stress. What do you think, Shooter? I have to say, man, at least about a good eighty. If you ask me, it's, it's a lot of motherfuckers dealing. You, you got the rich and famous damn show dealing with stress, so I don't know. It might be lower. Who knows? But I, no, y'all, y'all both right. You both so. right there. I'm looking at the notes from what I wrote down on Google, and you have to forgive me. I ain't. I ain't validate or look at the site but i'm like that's look like an accurate number and tim hit the nail right on the head with the hammer it's 75 percent. that's what i have written down right here in my notes 75 percent of the people in the world today deals with stress or carries a lot of stress you know when they talked about high school students or college students when you look at it from a student point of view and the work point of view then it bumps up to 80 percent of the people dealing with stress and don't know how to handle that. And stress could come in a multitude of ways. You know, people worrying about how they look or somebody else going to say what they drive and what they eat, like a ton of simple things that don't probably have nothing to do with you. It's just what somebody else might be feeling who don't control you. So stress can do a multitude, a multitude of things to you, but none of them are healthy for you. Not one of them are healthy for you. Y'all can't hear that rain too heavy, can it? No. Nah. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Mm -mm. But yeah. I don't man, hear it at all, man. You learn how to breathe, man, and just kind of think before you speak. Don't speak off emotions. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've learned, I'm learning how to control my emotions more. You know what I'm saying? Listen to uh, opinion. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has their opinion. Everybody has their right to their opinion. So, you know, actually listening, you know what I'm saying, doesn't make a person a bad person because they have their opinion, you know what I'm saying? No. Got, you know, we all have opinions, man. So, yeah, man, stress, man, a lot of it, you can get, you can get rid of, like, a good 60% of it on your own, you know what I'm saying? You clean up your own house. The rest yeah. of it comes with techniques, breathing techniques, um, finding something you love to do, fishing, weightlifting, boxing kickboxing whatever the hell you do hey he must some some people they drink you know but hey i don't that's a temporary fix you know what i'm saying because that's a whole nother subject but yeah it's a temporary fix but some people you know need that little temporary fix but if you're looking for something more permanent you know I say go something with the healthier route for us actually getting, you know, something that's doing some some good to you. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, that's how I deal with it, man. I slain some mine or throw that motherfucking rod out there. Read a book. You know what I'm saying? Shit, read a book on how to deal with it. Everything man, like that a book, open the book up how to deal with shit. You know, it's it's a lot, man, you could you could do. I, again, I couldn't I couldn't look at that without looking at, you know, what are the tips? What's some tips? What's some strategies? What's some techniques for dealing with stress? And you started out talking about it earlier and you was just going back and forth. I thought you was reading my list. You know what I'm saying? Like right. one of the things at the top of the list to deal with stress is to get active. Sometimes right. we just sit around and we just wallow in our own self-pity. You know, are you sitting down staring at the TV or you just sitting there? looking sad and you thinking about all the things that's happening in your life right. right now or maybe in your past and not knowing that man this, this shit don't last it, it doesn't right. last at all you know we couldn't change you know 20 minutes ago you couldn't right. change any of that what happened 20 minutes ago but we carry it 20 years later you know right. what i'm saying and if you do that to yourself then you're gonna be killing yourself and again right. 
60%, 70% of the stress that you deal with, you probably could get rid of on your own. So right. definitely getting active, working out. That was one of the top things on the list. Get active and work out. I could definitely tell you because I wasn't as consistent in the last few months. I feel like maybe the last year with my working out. But I'm definitely proud to say I've been getting back into my regular workout. And I just started out light, just doing body stuff push-ups ab works calisthenics you know i'm like i'm not finna i got my little 35 pound dumbbells i got a couple of 25 pound plates i got a bar you know i got a little bench so i got some stuff that i can build up with that i need but i'm like you know what before i just jump in there let me just gradually build myself back up so you don't feel right. overwhelmed and sometimes what we do we attempt to bite off more than we can chew at the time you know what i'm saying right. you have to take that time to strengthen your mind just like you strengthen your body because if you jump right into it you might hurt yourself right and that's just the honest to god truth so you got to take time to do some of those things that work for you if you ain't worked out in a very long time don't get out there and thank you 22 or you finna go slang that iron around it's gonna break you right. and it's gonna make you not want to come back tomorrow because you're so sore and you're so right. tired so you got to find I something that I kind of oh I'm bad. I didn't mean to cut you. No, no, you good. You before you I say that, hold that thought real quick, and then I'll read this comment from Tim so we don't get too far off of what he's talking about. He said, biggest thing is to identify the trigger that sets off the stress and face it. Some of us are told to avoid or trigger our trigger or trigger, which is wrong. Absolutely right. I'm a firm believer, and you deal with that emotion at the time that you in that emotion and that feeling. If you mad deal with that but be able to express why you mad because a lot of times you might feel like you angry and you're not really angry you could just feel let down you could just be disappointed but if you don't know how to express that you disappointed it comes off as anger so it's like if you sad be sad my pops died in february i was good the day i found out the next day or two i went out on some walks before i know it i was crying i was by myself but it was like yo this is what I need to go through. This is the right. feeling and the emotion that I'm in. So you have to deal with that at that time. Figure out what that trigger is that's stressing your mind and deal with that. What was you about to say, Killer? Oh, uh, well, yeah, let me go back a little bit. But yeah, mostly I know with men, you know, we be real hard on our stuff about finding out what our mission you know what our mission of life is you know what i'm saying for us um you know might feel like failures for us job wise um you know what i'm saying for take you know keeping up with the household fucking um you know relationship shit for us um intimacy with the woman or whatever you know what i'm saying that that plays a lot of stress on the man too but you know i tell people don't beat yourself up for as on with all that shit man because that shit go come long as you working to your purpose you know what i'm saying like as long as you're not just you know what i'm saying because there's a lot of people that have the talent to do shit but just don't know how to get out there and get it done you see what i'm saying but you have to actually put a plan together to get it done and get it to base i'm like i ain't gonna lie man like I really been deep into the getting into your purpose shit because you know that's that's some type of shit I had lost in my marriage of actually being in my purpose, you know what I'm saying, getting to my purpose of what the fuck I supposed to be here doing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Now I've had time to reflect and actually get back on my training shit, my um, you know what I'm saying, actually about to start selling protein now. Um you know what I'm saying? Just basically getting the shit I like to do, fucking fishing. Uh, you know, just just hanging out, man. But you kind of lose yourself in a marriage sometimes, especially long as I was married. I was married about 15 years. So sometimes you kind of lose yourself, you know, trying to take take care of everybody else in the household. And, you know, you, you look back 15 years later like, damn. You know what I'm saying? I've been carrying a major weight on my shoulder 15 fucking years, man. So, <laughs> so sometimes, man, I ain't going to lie, man. Like, when it's all said and done and that that weight just come off, man, it's a big relief, bro. Bro. And it's a big relief, man. Man, you speaking on that, and I, and, I, and I can say this, and, you know, again, 
for me, when I first came back, and it, you heard my story before, I was the dude that was out doing whatever I wanted to do in so many words and was separated from my family. And I think at that point in time, divorce was one of the best things that happened to me because it gave me an opportunity to separate myself and to actually find myself. And it was right about before I was turning 40, before I really started digging into what my purpose is and what am I supposed to do and what am I growing through? And uh, I, I began to discover that. That's how I'm over here able to speak to you. All this was part of my purpose about speaking and helping people get through. And at that time, I had really helped myself get through. But I, if I'm being truthful and I'm being honest, I know when I got back into my marriage that I started to put myself on the shelf and I started to lose a part of myself because now you're looking to be just the good husband and the good father and to make sure your, your wife is good and your family is good. But if you ain't good, then everything is going to fall apart. You can have all the money you want. You can have a nice house. You can take trips and all that. But that doesn't mean that everything is going to be OK. And reading in that book, The Way of the Superior Man, I believe is like within the first three chapters. It talks about if you ask the man what, what, what he would rather go after, his purpose or love, most men, real men, can choose their purpose. purpose. got to be, yeah. <laughs> it, it's got to be your purpose. And here's the kicker about that. If you're a real man and you get with a real woman, she's going to want you to be on your purpose anyway because you got a vision gonna, for the she family. She's going to push some buttons. Yeah, that's in the book too. Yeah, it's going to. Oh, for sure. Woman, a real woman going to push you to level up. They're going to push you to. Yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. not it's not gonna be a battle of what we gonna do how we gonna do i'm, right. I'm here as your helpmate to support you and as you get discovering your purpose and you want your thing it's it's automatically gonna flow over into her and then she gonna do what she need to do and that's and it, what's gonna strengthen you it said it right man that book too it hit on um your woman knows knows you better than any counselor anybody will ever you know, she know how to push your buttons. She could be loving. Yeah. She could be a killer. You know what I'm saying? That all that, that everything in that book, man. It was some. It was some good shit in that bitch, man. But yeah, Tim but saying, yeah. men, anger is our defense mechanism to hide our softer emotions. I could, I could see that being true. You know, especially at this day and time and age, because I think what masculinity meant 50 years ago, it doesn't mean today, and what it meant to be a man in the 60s, it don't mean to be a man in the 80s, 90s, and 2022. Things have changed and people don't want to evolve. And it's something, it's more to a man. Yeah, you got those three principles, I believe, from the from the from the father to protect, to provide, and to be priest-like. But being priest-like mean that you are the pastor in your home. You are the preacher in your home. And you get that by you getting your shit right by getting with God. That's how you get your purpose. So then you could go feed the wife and the family. And before, back in the day, you know, men was looked at more so, okay, you had the songs like Papa Was a Rolling Stone. So it was almost accepted that this what men do. This is what they going to do, you know, leave them alone. And that's dad. He get the big piece of chicken and he don't. He not taking the kids to daycare and he not going to baby showers. Now it's like dudes is having, you know, reveal parties with their lady. They having co-ed baby showers. That don't make you less of a man because you being there to support maybe the lady in your life. You being a part of your child that's coming into the world because you play a big part in that too. If you look at how they used to dress in the 60s or whatever, they wore their clothes fitting and everything else. And in the 80s and 90s, you'll probably clown them. In the 90s, it was big. Now it's like you wearing your clothes to fit again. And if you a man that's worked for your shape, killer wolf, I'm a slim dude, you know, my, my shape is always going to be the beast. You might want clothes to fit you. That doesn't make you less of a man, bro. Like, it's so much more I, to being a man just what a person see visually. This this is what this is what I recently learned just by, you know, this book. I learned um, you have a lot of women playing the masculine role in the relationship of because a lot of women are making more money than men these days. Mm -hmm. So for now, nah, that's, that's okay, you know, whatever. But that man has to be comfortable and where he needs to be at with his purpose. You know what I'm saying? Because if he ain't where he at with his purpose, you know, y'all just go bump heads. You know what I'm saying? That woman playing the masculine role and to have a relationship, one has to play the feminine role 
and one has to be the masculine. You know what I'm saying? So two two masculine roles together. I don't care if you um butch, butch, um dyke, you know what I'm saying? Um what else is it? Um, you know, man, woman, or uh, well, however you do transgender, what it is. Somebody has to play the man role, somebody has to play the woman role. You can't have yeah. two two roles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And have a successful relationship is not gonna work. Yeah, We're it two talks about the different uh, humans, man, like creatures, period. Man and woman, two different people. Man. Yeah, it talked it talked about polarities in the book, you know, like you got right. the North Pole right. and the South Pole. Mm -hmm. Um, even in a, it talked about even in a homosexual relationship, you know, or a heterosexual right. relationship, there has to be a dominant masculine energy, and there's going to be a dominant feminine energy. Right, and right. if you as a male, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I think in a lot of cases, even in my own in my own marriage, I had more of a feminine energy in some areas than I had a masculine energy. And I'm like, damn, well, how that happened? I was raised around. I, my dad was, a, you know, my mom wasn't there. But when I look back on my life, no shade to my dad, God rest his soul. He wasn't around real men. Most of the time he was around some men that was no offense like less than or his little friends that you know dope fiends or who he was trying to run into the church and rescue but they weren't doing nothing but outside of that you was with a bunch of women cackling you know what i'm saying it's like right. as i went through high school and things i'm like damn this is my crew too i'm right. about smarter than everybody and i wasn't even <laughs> super sharp so you feel like you're doing something till you get amongst the real masculine energy right. and it makes you feel uncomfortable so a lot of guys that think they men probably wasn't even raised by a real man or know what that looks like. I'm telling you, that book, The Way of the Superior Man, it was a gut puncher for me the first time I read it. Man. Like, it slapped shit out. You just slapped you on the ground, bro. Yeah, <laughs> man, that motherfucker show you how to have superior orgasm, all kinds of shit out man. there, all the way from your spine. Talking about if a woman could drain you, nigga, she got you. I was like, ooh, like, I, she had me then, because I be rolling, baby, but yeah. It got a lot of shit going on with that motherfucker, man. Uh, Kibby, welcome to the show, man. I see you come on talking shit as usual. He say, I'm walking into this late, but my wife knows me inside and out. That sucks, but she called me out and she's right. Well, somebody got to, man. I'm I'm so glad she do it and I don't have to do it no more. Because I remember it was a time when you thought you was running some things. You realize you still ain't, huh? <laughs> he say, Ethan. <laughs> You are always bitch. Ah, whatever. Laugh out loud. Nah, I, I feel you, man. You know what though? I can be honest enough and say, it was definitely uh, some for me. I think some more. I don't know. I feel like again, my emotions was more of a the way I dealt with my emotions for me. I felt was more of a feminine trait than it was a masculine trait. I wasn't controlling my emotions, and that's like my gift and my curse. Because who I am naturally is an emotional person my emotions also help me to be able to do these shows to reach out to other people to connect with men or women and interact with people too but it's not the fact that you have emotions the the, the issue comes in when they controlling you and you not controlling them that's when it becomes a problem with dealing with your emotions you know what i'm right. saying or as tim say we go back to anger because we don't know how to deal with those softer sides of our emotions we don't have great communication skills and then that in turn can begin to cause stress because you don't know how to talk to your wife your woman you don't know how to communicate with your homeboy when y'all having a conversation he say something that you know chinks your arm or make you feel uncomfortable because you haven't slowed down and learned yourself you know or became a little selfish to understand yourself or as men, sometimes, you know, you get uncomfortable even being by yourself. Most people don't like to be by themselves. How can you right. learn you if everybody else is telling you what the hell you're supposed to do? Right, <laughs> right, right. And you got to you, you gotta get that time to yourself. Um, you know, it, it just can't be all, you know, just family and this, that, and the third. I think it's healthy for a man to meet up with his homeboys at least once a week. Same yeah. go for a, a woman, you know, because if y'all up under each other all day, every day, you know what I'm saying? Yo, y'all go bump heads after a while. You know, it's good to go get out, get that release, kind of like we do this show every Sunday. 
you know, talk with the fellas and get some shit off your chest or whatever. Uh, it's good at least once a week to talk to your homeboys, you know, have some guys that hold you account accountable for your bullshit. Because I gave you guys a hard time about just fucking read the book. <laughs> you know, I was like, like getting upset, like I ain't read no motherfucking book, and so I kind of had to hold myself accountable. And shit, I got these motherfucking thirds. I like, you know what? I'm about to read this motherfucking stuff. You know, I, just, I remember talk. I remember talking to you too. You said, "Man, I'm gonna get my book. I probably yeah. get me a little cone, get me some water, and I'm gonna sit right. back and read my four chapters." Yeah. I said, "Now." Nah, Watch it, it might get good to you. You be done with that thing before you know it. Right. Now, here it is Sunday. You're like, man, I'm already done. And it's I know it's like 51, 52 chapters. It's accountability. 51. It's accountability, man. Um, like, damn, accountability is a motherfucker, bro. Once you hold yourself accountable for all your bullshit, you start to see the light of where you need to go. You know, if you keep blaming others and all this other shit, you know, you go continue the same patterns. Even when you change relationships, you're going to bring those same habits into the next relationship. So, and get close with God, man. Um, you know, I was fucked up with that. You know, I say I used to see you. I was like, damn, man, I want to be. I was jealous a little bit. I like, man, I want to be like my bro, man. He just, he just be like talking highly. Like, man, come, come holler at me, man. Come holler at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when it finally happened, I was scared. But oh, for it, sure. it, it spoke through me like, you know what I'm saying? Like a like almost like I was possessed with a with a good spirit though. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It kind of talked me through what I needed to do. And hey man, that shit real, man. Shit real. So we all see people that to change their lives, you know. I, I understand what they went through. Absolutely. Nah. And you know, when you change your life, here's what's something that's important that I don't think I got before. Sometimes what you think may be good for you may not be what God has for you. And sometimes people and things are removed from your life so he could get you right. And a lot of times God puts us in positions and remove people out of our life. And then we go right back thinking this is what's right. And you find yourself in the bad situation. It's like, no, right. sometimes I'm moving you so you can move on so you can grow. Because at the end of the day, if you believe in God as a Christian, if you believe in Allah as a Muslim, if you believe in the Buddhist, you believe in the Tao and all these other different religions, whatever you want to call it. If you believe in a, a spirituality that's bigger than yourself and that's higher than yourself, most of them tells you about you have to care for you first. It's self-care. It's like they talk about on the plane. Nigga, don't put your baby mask on before you put your mask on because right, you might yeah, put your baby mask on yeah. and pass out in the process. Right. And hers might fall off. So it's like you got to make sure you good before you go. It's And, and, and talking military talk, it's self-aid, buddy aid, and then you move <laughs> further than first aid. You know what I'm saying? Right, so it's right, like... Right. You got to make sure you secure your package. You got to make sure you get you in order. And talking about 75% of the world, 75% of America deal with stress, you know they couldn't be dealing with themselves. You listening to your wife, you listening to you listening to your parents, you listening to your kids, you listening to your boss at work, you listening to your homeboys' problems. Like you carrying everybody's weight. And you right. feeling like you can't move on. But if you got rid of their weight, you just dealt with your own, you'll be sweet. Man, and I ain't gonna lie, when I when it, when I had my breakthrough, man, he told me, he was like, you know, I'm gonna get some shit out of your life. You might not like it, but it's the best. And it happened like it happened fucking like a blank of the eye. Everything, you know, just start shit start dropping out. I started to add growth to my life on um, this here dropped out more growth added on to it. He like, okay, so you being loyal, you still sticking with it. You know what I'm saying? Thank you God for every morning, you know, getting down, actually getting it to my spirit. You know what I'm saying? And after that, man, it's just nothing but growth from there, man. So yeah, I ain't I going definitely, about it. I definitely I know that was one of the things for me. I have to be honest with myself and say, I gave up. Like again, what you talking about, man, when I went through my, when I was divorced and I went through my separation, it was just me and God. 
And the minute I got back <clears throat> with my family, of course, I was excited and I'm grateful and I still am. But I started giving more to my family than I was giving to God. And before you know it, I went from reading every day to reading every other day. And then you're like, damn, I ain't read it like a week or two. And God like, yo, what, what about me, bro? So I, ain't, <laughs> so I ain't here no more. And it's like, I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's Ephesians or something in the Bible where Paul talks about, you know, it's difficult for a man to be married at times because if you're not aligned with your purpose and had that relationship with God where he wants you to go, now you kind of stuck. Do I do what God want me to do or do what I do with what my wife want me to do? Because I physically could see you and I could touch you and I could freak with you and everything else that we do. But God, I don't, you know, I don't see you like that, especially right. if I ain't got a strong relationship. So you think, oh, as a man, I got to make sure my wife is happy and she good. God, like, don't get it misunderstood, bro. You need right. to make sure you good with me, you good with you, and then everybody else come through. <laughs> That's right. the order of it. The good thing, though, you know, he ain't a selfish God. So, you know, we're not perfect. A lot no. of us fall off the bandwagon. Um, you know, we gotta get back on that motherfucker. But um, yeah, man, it's good on this side, man. It's, it's, hey, they say grass ain't greener, but it's green the motherfucker back this way, man. <laughs> and I'm, I don't know, man. I, I just smile a lot different now. It's just something, something that I can't explain. You know, it's real, yeah. bro. It's real. It's a it's a piece, man. It's, yeah. a, it's a wonderful thing when you find that internal peace, like you can find joy in everything. Like for me speaking, somebody like, how did you come up with the name Mr. Peen? I'm like, I've been saying it's a positive and every negative for a very long time. Like, and there is when you are willing to slow down and look through it. And once you discover that you like, bro, there's a peace in everything. Like right. somebody got it worse than you in all, in all aspects of life. You got to enjoy where you at in life and be all right with that. Right. Be all right. Be all right with that. You gotta be, man, because if you ain't all right with your purpose, um, your woman sees that. You know, especially the guys that's married. Uh, your woman sees when you're not in tune with your purpose, and it kind of affects her because it don't give her the um, you know, the the security to just be in her feminine state for as um, just let go and trust in that her man is going to take care of everything because she, you know, your woman always know when you can do better. And they're going to tell you, they're going to poke you, you could be doing this, what the fuck are you doing? You know, that woman, a good woman, let me say a good woman, she go, she go poke you and get at you, um, love you, rub your head, all that good shit, but yeah, man, you got to be in your purpose for us with, you can't blame, I've read this too, you can't blame family for you not going after your purpose, you know what I'm saying? Because you're kind of um, neglecting them, you know what I'm saying? By not by not going to your purpose, you know what I'm saying? So basically, you you gotta, man, you gotta like sometimes be selfish and be like a man that's more driven to his purpose will prosper more than a man that just you know living a mediocre or you know not not living on that edge, you know what I'm saying? Isn't that absolutely? Too you remember a foot on the edge, but not like too far over, you know, staying a foot over that motherfucker, but not too far to stretch yourself out. But, but yeah, man, that's, that's a good motherfucker. Man, I tell you what, I recommend this book right here to every man that's out there, man. And I'll tell you where I got it from. You know where I got it from? I got it from Nipsey Hussle. He was oh, on okay. the Breakfast Club one okay. day. And Nipsey Hussle was talking about it. And Nipsey Hussle got it from his woman. He got it from Lauren London because she had read it and she told him about it because he was a reader. So she like, babe, you need to read this book. That's how he kind of broke it down. So I'm like, oh, OK, the way of the superior man. Nipsey right. talking about this. So I do. I read it and I told my buddy King about it. He read it. Now you didn't read it. And I think I told somebody else about it. my buddy, my barber, and my own boy, Trey. He read it. And I'm like, man, if you a man, this is definitely a book to put in your rotation. Like. This is a book, like I said, I've read this thing twice. And when I start looking at it again, just going back through it and getting just in the introduction, I'm like, man, I got a lot of stuff highlighted and underlined in right, the introduction right. right here. Like, this is right. something you could go back and feed on when, <laughs> whenever you need to, bro. Like the introduction long, about four or five pages, if I mistake, about three, 
four, four, four pages by mistake, but yeah. The introduction, the introduction is longer than the first two chapters. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, damn, I ain't much to the first chapter yet. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I like but, Wolf, you know, continue on, nigga. You, you know, you gotta continue on reading, man. Read the book, man. But yeah. Once once you get into that thing, man, it does help to relieve all type of stress. You know, it's like right, again, right. we talked about that and, and you know, moving on the strategies to, to move on from stress to success. And Wolf named off a couple of them that I have on my list: tips and strategies. Get active, man. Not just picking up a book and reading, but like we grunts or, or, you know, a grunt or you military or you former military. Like if you still breathing and you still alive, bro, you still could do some type of activity to work your body out. Because when you work out physically, it changes everything mentally. That's like me telling my wife and I talk to my wife. I'm like, man, if I say I'm fat, although I know I'm not that I'm like, it's a challenge for me. Working out physically does something to me mentally. If I don't work out on a regular basis, my physical falls off, then my mental gets weaker. Like I'm susceptible and, to being stressed over bullshit that I ain't even that ain't even necessary. And you know, for us with you know, the first thing a person sees is your body. You know, um, not saying if you have an injury, of course, or have a certain disease, you know, that's of course, you know what I'm saying, but if nothing wrong with you, man, I say, you know, work on yourself. Start start off with the body, man. Um, that shows that you're disciplined. You know, that shows that job employer, like, okay, he's he's disciplined, so he must get up every morning, at least works out, so I can depend on him. You know, to come to come to work every morning and this, that, and the third. But um, you know, your confidence level is up. Your clothes fit better. Um. People look at you different when you come in. You know what I'm saying? And actually, you know, you get respect. You get a lot of respect for being, you know, fit. I don't mean to beat people in the head with it, but damn, this is your body, man. Like, this No, nah, beat them in the live. head, bro. It's cool. This is where you live in here. You live with this motherfucker. So, you know, you take, you got people take better care of their cars and their body. You know, they get the tune ups on the cars, all changes. Changing all the fluid like these gear heads, they be up in that mother cranking, cranking them wrenches. But take that wrench, man, and crank that, crank that motherfucker on yourself and get, you know, get at it, man. But yeah, get your body is a good place to start, bro. Like, say if you lost out on a relate a relationship, hey man, show that woman. Okay, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to get out here, look good, lift the weight, you know what I'm saying? Get them hitting them, hitting them pictures off. Be like, okay, he looking good, he looking good. But yeah, man, start off here first and then, of course, start off in the inside because what you put inside will show on the outside, you know. But yeah. Absolutely. They go, I think they, I think they really go hand in hand because again, for me, building myself physically builds me mentally. You know, if your mental, if your mental is in a tank, you you may not have the energy to want to get up and do things physically, but if you just start adding that little physical workout to you, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna change your mentality. Like right. I've been back on my thing for about two weeks, and you can I can just go in the bathroom and look in the mirror, like okay, change is happening. I can tell how this shirt fit and it didn't fit this way before. Like right. change is starting to occur. You know, I'm out walking, I see neighbors they're like, man, you're looking up. Okay, cool. So you see the change beginning to occur and you're going to see the change in your body first before you recognize it in your mind. Right, so if right. you start doing a little bit push up, a little bit sit up, a little bit walking, just a little bit of something is going to it's it's going to it's going to um cause you to want to do more. It, it's going to pull at your heartstrings. It's like you talked about reading a book. Like right. I didn't read this book I'm on to my next book now because it unlocks it something else in my mind. Like, oh, this shit is right. really possible and I can do this. Right, right. Yeah, but um, and then watch the words that you say. Um, words are powerful as hell, man. Uh, you gotta watch the words that you say because you can't look at the next man and be like, I can't do that shit if you ain't never tried it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm coming from a you know, COVID in November, like bad COVID, lost Balbo's fucking close to 20 pounds, shriveled up like fucking prune. Um, right after COVID, I was healing up from COVID. December 4th, had, had a head-on collision, uh, fractured neck, 
shit was going on with my total body because you know once you get that wreck you feel shit all do it so yeah. i've been going i just did my last visit well i got two more visits with the chiropractor but i'm good already but i've, I've been back for the chiropractor about eight nine times you know Bro, i go back tomorrow pop. yeah getting next pop back pop and all that shit, but it's it's a process but i tell people i basically started from scratch um i couldn't lift the fucking barbell couldn't go up the stairs um couldn't do fucking five push-ups you know what i'm saying so anything's possible man you just gotta get out there and believe yourself and and you know rebuild your life man don't don't just settle for that bullshit. Fact. get your happiness um get your health right and get yourself spiritually right with god man and you know sky hey, mind body and spirit that's how it go get your spirituality right get your mind right and be building your body at the same time i think about that you talking about not being able to do five push-ups and all that it just takes me back to ct fletcher when he posted videos after the open heart surgery and things like that you know just right. Walking down the hallway at the hotel, you know what I'm saying? Getting on the ground, couldn't do one push up. You talking about a man that was there, basically one of the strongest men in the world, breaking all What's type of records for, you know, free girls and all that. Yeah, bust yeah. his whole shit up. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, man, if you alive right now today, you have an opportunity to change your life. Period. Got to. Got to. Until don't, you don't said and go, it ain't never over. Yeah, don't stay there, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? Don't just stay at that low point, man. You got life to live, man. You, we got brothers that, you know, would have been out here living their lives. So we have to get out the ones that didn't make it from overseas combat. So I live through them. You know what I'm saying? I have brothers that I knew was fit over there that passed. And, you know, they'll be like, damn, Wolf, what the fuck you doing, man? We over here slanging iron and shit out of, you know, I done went on or whatever. You back here just sobbing and shit, man. Get your ass up and get to it, man. But yeah, I hear I hear they voices. When I was going through my problem, I heard they voice like, get up, Wolf. You know how we talk as grunts. Mm -hmm. Be like, man, sure. quit, being a, quit, quit being a pussy, man. And get your ass up and do some push-ups or something. But yeah, you know, we got to yeah. live through them guys, man. You know. You have to. Because you still here to. carrying a... You still here fighting the battle. You still carrying the baton. Like somebody always watching. Like somebody watching what you do and how you come through, you know? And oh, like you said, those guys talking to you, like, what, what, what's this, bro? That's it? You just going to lay down and die? No, nah, that ain't how we get down. You're going right. to die. You might as well die over there in the shit. Don't wait till you get back home to safe America. No, nah, it's not. I ain't saying it's not good to be, you know, of course, we all go through our shit for us just down and depressed and shit but man um climb up out that shit man you got family members that depend on you um and if you can't do it yourself go get the help you know just don't don't just um at least try you know some people just cut it off and don't even try but you know go get you some help man man listen this is this is one of the t-shirts that i made where i'm at one of the t-shirts that i made that i was doing one of my speeches in and when i showed up they like man how did you say he's a, he a motivational speaker and he wearing a t-shirt that say funeral like you should the look that i get when people see me wearing this one and i have another one in blue and red that i make you're like what it's a, it's a conversation starter bro why are you why are you wearing a shirt say funeral? <laughs> i said cuz it's a message to it like huh Say, look at it like this, bro. When you when you go to a funeral, when you go to a funeral, and you put that person in the ground. It ain't that often that you going back to the cemetery to sit down and hang out with them, have a drink, and talk to them. I said you might do that if it was somebody close, but once the funeral is over, that's it. And so for me, my mindset, and I and I created this thing back in 2017. Actually, after I came from a funeral i created the message the t-shirt didn't come to years later it didn't come until like 2021 and yeah, uh you came with the car yeah absolutely the you car came I first threw the card on the table i'm like man what's <laughs> i like is that my is that my tar tarot sign what they call it on like tarot reading or something i like man yeah you got a record out for me i like what that means that he explained i'm like oh okay that makes sense 
Yeah, and sense. that's what it was. Every morning, man, have a funeral. You right. gotta bury the doubt, you gotta bury the fear, you gotta bury the depression, the unforgiveness, the stress, and you gotta choose life. But shit, when they right. gone, they gone, you still living. And that's how I look at it. So it's like, for me, it's a it's a statement. Like, nah, bro, I got life today. I, I get to choose to live this thing. And it's the same thing with stress, man. You gotta right. figure out a way Rather, again, I reach out to shooter. Like, I reach out to guys in my accountability group. I don't care how uncomfortable it make me feel. Bro, don't let your mind stop you from growing you because all this shit will pass. Like, you done made it back home from Iraq. You done made it through the Army. You made it through some divorces. People done lost kids. People done lost family members. Like, I lost both of my parents in three years. And, and what's this, 22? In two wow. years, bro. My mom died uh, March 26, 2020. My dad died February 19, 2022. And when my pops died, I practically fell out with my brother and my sister. So they almost like in this stage of my life dead to me right now. So it's like, <laughs> bro, not, and then on top of that, like one of my favorite young cousins died November the 6th. So it's like, bro, people dying every day. What you going to do while you alive? Like, what are you going to do while you alive? So don't don't allow your mindset to keep you in the place that doesn't allow you to grow and don't That's crazy. allow your pride to keep you there too a lot of a lot of us guys got a lot of pride you know so you know once you drop that shit, man you're human just like everybody else so yeah once you drop that pride and know how to get out there and ask your brothers for help and you know talk to your bros about stuff man it, a lot better, man, instead of holding all that shit in. Fuck all I listened to that uh that J. Cole, Pride is the Devil. Right. I think you got a hold of me. You got to get hold. You got to let it go, man. That pride and that ego, you got to learn how to use that ego to your advantage, to pump your own self up. Don't let it get you so, your head so big that it's sending you the wrong way. Don't let your pride get in the way that it kills you, man. And, and that's right. what happens a lot of times. Don't. Yeah, somebody counting on you, especially if you got kids, you know, somebody right. counting on you out here and you counting on you. Like yeah, yeah. you got a plan and it's a purpose and there's a reason for your life or else you wouldn't have life. She right. if you was born a winner, you beat the other 40 million sperm cells that was looking to fertilize the egg, and you made it through the birthing process. So yeah, like that must have been. I know how to came up against a runner or something, a sprinter. I don't know how I made it that bitch first, man. That motherfucker there. <laughs> You got all kinds of athletes probably float to that motherfucker every day. How the hell you make it? You right. Yeah. You made it. Like, oh, yeah, man. I mean, scientific fact. They say anytime a man ejaculates anywhere from 40,000 to 40 million sperm cells. You know what I'm saying? So you want to race out of 4,000. Let's just say 4,000. Let's knock it down 1%. Yeah, right, right. Let's say 4,000. You were in the race of 4,000 people. Most of us <laughs> ain't. Most of us probably ain't never came in first place with 40 people on the PT test. So, <laughs> I know I have it, not no yeah, runs. Nah. Shit, nah. <laughs> I was too drunk, but I was passing. I was passing good. I was, you know, I was 300, even 300 club, but you know, it, yeah, I was, I was drunk most PT tests. Yeah, so, man. full that gin, full that gin and orange juice. <laughs> Man, I can do push ups and sit ups. Man, running was never one of those things I wanted to kill myself for. Right, never, right. but I pass. I yeah, definitely yeah. pass. That's the mind thing. Pass that motherfucker, man. Yeah, man. It. Uh, going through some more of these strategies, man, because I know get active is something we beat down for you. Let y'all go, and I think uh, I don't know if Tim mentioned this or it kind of came up. I know Wolf mentioned it, reading it in the book. One of the other things it talked about was meditating. Talked about laughing more, man. Laughter is food for the yeah. soul, man. Find you a funny movie. Find your funny your family members. You know, make fun of yourself, bro. The other day I was on Instagram. My Instagram real singing, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, 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 <laughs> I started to post. Can't nobody sign like it came. <laughs> you should have posted it. <laughs> hey, you know, first thing I thought about was old boy and spinners when you just said that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I forgot all about that fool, man. That boy, though, no. he made hey, that boy yeah. cut his hair off, man. Hey, man, house. I didn't. He knew it was time to go. I didn't do that to him. I just was saying what I felt, man. Like, let it go, bro. You coming in here with the um, Jerry Curl with the pink shirt on every Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> Think he pinky? I thought he was pinky in that motherfucker, man. <laughs> 
Yeah, man. So it say, of course, laugh more, connect with others. Wolf was just talking about that. We was talking about that. Reach out to people, man. Don't let your pride get you in the way, man. It could save your life, which could save somebody else's life, man. Right. You know, the answer is always no until you ask the question, whatever that may be. You know, you have no clue what other individuals have overcome or what they went through to get to where they at. So connect with others. Be assertive, it says. Assert yourself. Assert yourself in different groups, in different environments, man. Me and my wife was a couple weeks back. I'm a kid from the west side of Detroit who people didn't think I'd make it though I was 18 years old. I now live in the suburbs of Cedar Park, Texas, and me and my wife was about a month or so ago, it feel like now nah, I had a political party for the dude that's on the Cedar Park City Council. And he see me like, oh, Ethan, what's up? That's my friend. Like the dude that's running for mayor asked me if I wanted to do politics. Like you should come be part of my campaign. So it's like, be, be, be assertive. And, and it was really because I was being me. I was bow tie fly. And they seen the bow tie and it was like, oh, that grabs my attention. This dude in here at the bow tie, like that's a conversation starter. But then I also was like, hey, I'm such and such, you know, and I was hitting them with inspiration cards. Oh, you need the funeral card. You need this right here. So it's like, right. don't be afraid to, to be who you are and search yourself in uh, places and situations that make you uncomfortable. Or as I like to say, you have to get comfortable with being made uncomfortable because it's in our uncomfort that we truly grow. Nobody grows in comfort. Right. And it took me a while to understand that I was always comfortable. You know what I'm saying? It took me to actually get out of my comfort zone and actually start to, you know, actually start to grow in life, man, instead of just staying at that comfort zone, start to, you know, get out that comfort zone and actually grow. So, yeah. Glad it says uh, next yoga i get my yoga on i do my yoga from time to time it it definitely works for you see my chiropractor bend me up enough that mother be trying to bend my leg i'm like hold up brother you uh, <laughs> trying to be funny or something mother? you know damn well my leg ain't going up <laughs> hey you know how that go though man you you work out i don't know how much you uh you might i don't know but that stretching man that that's one of the yeah, biggest dude. parts of working out like yeah. you all swole up and you right. got all those muscles if you ain't doing no stretching everything gonna start to tighten up on you them ligaments right. and you know tendons ain't ain't big as that muscle so right. you need right. you need you to be to. flexible yeah no pops to. feel good man it's like a, oh, a beast yeah. i don't know how they do the shit, but they do it man them, them motherfuckers, they're like i don't know man that's listen if you deal. got if you get any type of VA disability, bro, whether you think something wrong with your back or not, I recommend going to a chiropractor because yeah, yeah. I didn't know how, you know, out of whack and how out of line I was. And I wasn't in no car wreck. But just from years of rucking, just years from humping gear, just jumping up and down, what you do as a young man, as an older man in the infantry, like you start to collapse in your spine and disc is getting degenerative. Like, it's very important to start and then what happens is when you start having problems in your leg when you start dealing with your sciatic nerve and you start dealing with tingling issues all that stems from the spine where all your nerve endings in that so right. what's happening a lot of times is those discs are being collapsed that cartilage that's in there is degenerating and it's rubbing bone on bone. So this is pinching your nerves, which is causing your arm to hurt. And you thinking, oh, doc, my arm hurt. And you go to the doctor, all he's going to do is give you a pill. Now you're going down another rabbit hole. So it's like, man, man if you can do that, go get a chiropractor, bro. They had this older lady in there, man. I'm going to cut it short. They had this older lady in there. She couldn't, like, walk before coming to a chiropractor three months ago. And she looked at me. She said he's the best. Like, they wanted to cut her open and everything. But... She came to chiropractic care for like three months, man. And the lady walks like, you know what I'm saying? Like she walked like me. She, she'd be just gone. Like mm -hmm. I couldn't walk like three months ago. She said, I like what? Mm -hmm. But man, yeah, man. Hey, my, I recommend uh, that too. Go try guys. Hey, the chiropractor, the, pop. <laughs> the VA chiropractor that I have, he's so cool. He like, man, I got into this 
you know, for the love of it. He talked about something like what you said. He, I think he was in an accident when he was young. He was in an accident like 17, 18, head on collision, bad. And he was all like, right. you know, the doctors was giving me all those pills and everything and none of it was working. I was in constant pain. And my mom decided she was going to take me to a chiropractor, which at that time, and you know, I think he said late 70s, early 80s, like that was like, talking about going to see a psychic nobody is going to see chiropractors like you must right. be out of your mind something wrong with you and he like they did their thing and after about three weeks like i felt felt good felt i could walk again and i could do stuff and he was like that was it and that's what he told me he was like listen man you are right you just keep doing what you're doing and keep coming here because i got two friends and those two friends that i have i don't want you to see i really don't get along with them i'm like what are you talking about he was like, oh, I'm talking about the two other doctors. He was like, there's one up above me, and he's the medicine guy. All he want to do is give you a bunch of pills and have you all doped up. That ain't going to heal you. And then you definitely don't want to see the guy above him. That's the surgery guy. He want to just cut on you. And once they start cutting on you, that's it. So that's it. you're not too bad of shape that we can't get you back right. And a lot of times you just out of alignment. It's like this topic, stress, strategy, success. A lot of times when you stressed out, you're just out of alignment mentally. Something has went wrong. Something is going on. It was a, a collision. It was a concussion. So you right. have to do things and you have to see people. As Wolf said, we were talking about opinions. You know, don't go get nobody opinion. Go get wise counsel. It's the difference between opinion and counsel. Everybody got an opinion. They want to talk about some shit they ain't did, they thought about doing, or you could do it. Fuck that. Right. Go get counsel. Go talk to somebody who's been through what you've been through and they can tell you how to get through it. Right. Once you get the right counsel in your life, you can start to get your life right, bro. Yeah. See. Get enough sleep, it says, and journal. Don't be afraid to write down what you're feeling. I got so many notebooks that I write in, it don't make sense. <laughs> telling you. Yeah, like, we used to do that in the military. You keep a book on you to write in. Hey, keep a book. The Journal, man, your thoughts them, are your thoughts. Write them notes down. You can share them with somebody if you want to. You don't have to share them with nobody if you don't want to. But journal isn't important, man, because it helps to release you. So if you add those things, if you add some of those tips and some of those strategies, I guarantee it will relieve the stress in your life. Get active. Meditate. Find something to laugh at. Get enough sleep. If you need six hours... Make sure you're getting your six. Plenty of water. You got to stay hydrated. I didn't got so bougie, man. I'm normally not drinking out of plastic. I'm usually drinking out of glass bottles. I just ain't found a gallon glass. <laughs> <laughs> I just ain't found a gallon glass. But yeah. stay hydrated, man. It makes your skin look better. You feel better. You rest better. Like, Man, it's a multitude of things that you could do to help relieve your stress. And it don't take no whole lot of money. It don't take no whole lot of time. It just takes you making up your mind and say you want something different in your life. All right. That's it. But yeah. I, Look, don't, I, I made him thirsty just now drinking that water. He had to pick his up and hit that motherfucker. Oh, uh, absolutely. Hey, what's going on, Gabe? How you doing, brother? Man, I got stress and issues galore right now. My new goal, my new gal has saved my life, my rock, and my ground. There it is. Hey, pick up this book, Gabe. I'm telling you. Pick up this book. Start reading this book. After you read this book, share the book with your lady. And it talks about having a strong woman in your life to help you get your life right. And having that woman that will push and pull you and help you find your way through. Shout out to Killer Wolf because we about to start the uh, Grunt Speak book club around here in a minute, boy. Because I'm telling you. Hey, I'm about to get on you got to strengthen your mind, man. We had that, what was that damn book? Uh, the, the, uh, the smart book we had in the army? The little ah, book? <laughs> that shit crazy. That shit crazy. Oh, you know what else? I just remembered I was watching the movie. The, uh, you know, your I Love Me book. Your awards and all the things that you accomplished. And you've oh. done. So don't be afraid to build a book on yourself or read the, uh, what's the name? Here's a good one for you. Read that old David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me. He talks about, he talks about, you know, the cookie jar. 
going to tap back into your cookie jar and looking at those things that you've already worn at, man, to remind right. yourself, yo, I'm I'm still Killer Wolf. I'm still Ethan Smith. I'm still Big Jones. I'm still Kibby. So it's like you have to strengthen your mind just like we had to strengthen our mind going through our tough times, makes it training for the first time, combat for the first time, being around a bunch of dudes from different ethnicities, ethnicities, walks of life, and how to get that right. So you have to remind yourself of the, of the king and the God that you are. Because if we made in God's image, then shit, therefore, my friend, you a God. Right. <laughs> you just got to know it. Right. Abe said, you're absolutely right about meditation, especially mindfulness meditation. Oh, my God. <clears throat> we that old. We're having book club. What the fuck? Not ever will I stay there. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. I've never thought I'd see the day where I could look behind me and see five or six books that I have. But, you know, as men, man, strengthening your mind is, is, is so very important. And if you don't want to read a book, listen to an audio book. It's just like taking something else to put in another tool in your toolbox to sharpen yourself. That's it. That is it, man. And it will relieve the stress. Yeah. Well, man, I got books all around this place, man. This has been another amazing episode of Speak Grunt. Grunt Speak. I just won't seem to let it go sometimes. Wolf kill uh coin to speak grunt from grunt speak to speak grunt. So <clears throat> you know, this has uh been another amazing show. However, I have a list of books for you as I've been to the meadows, one of the best rehabs. I got a list of books, but I never joined a book club. A book club, but I never joined a book club. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna have an official book club, but I'll definitely be recommending books. I say somebody to read, but I ain't afraid of a book club either if it's gonna help me grow. Cause shit, Warren Buffett at 80 something years old, he said he read for six hours a day and he like the what fourth rich, richest man in the world. So if he's reading six hours a day at damn near 90, then there must be some strength in that reading thing. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I'll try to find but uh <clears throat> This has been Grunt Speak, Speak Grunt. Well, you know what we do. We come through, we speak to you. We hope you get down in the chat. You speak to us too. Make sure if you didn't watch this, you go back and you catch the whole video. You can go on YouTube to catch the full show. Share it with one of your friends or somebody you may know, man. This may not be for your kids, but it'll bless your kids if you let them listen. Do what you do to be a better version of you. That's all I got to say. Wolf, well, you got something for the people before we close out today? Hey, stay up and keep it tight, baby. That's it. There it is. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful Sunday, and we will see y'all next week. Thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. Peace. God bless you too, Gabe. <laughs>